Hello and welcome to Executive Insights in association with KPMG. I'm Sarah Freeman, Editor of Business and Finance, and today I'm joined by Ken Bowles, CFO of Smurfit Kappa Group. Now, Ken, Smurfit Kappa Group was chosen as Company of the Month for February 2023. Can you give us some insight into the business strategies that culminated in that nomination? I think it's probably about performing in a volatile world. You know, if we think about the last number of years, COVID, post-COVID, straight into the terrible war in Ukraine, which led to energy crisis and then inflation high and rising um, and still not abating. I think it's, a, it's companies who performed well in that time is, is those who focused on controlling the controllables. Um, and I think in Smurfa Kappa, we, we did that particularly well. I suppose we're, we're lucky as a management team, we've been through a number of crises such as this. So it was about executing the playbook once again and making sure we deliver it for all our stakeholders. And Ken, you recently published trading results on your website. Can you give us a little more context around those and tell us about those results? I, I think we, we would see ourselves as performing reasonably well given the backdrop again. I, I think you're still seeing a demand outlook for, for most companies, which, which is the, the dominating factor around sentiment. Um, you know, you're, you're coming from a world where inflation remains a factor. Clearly the cost of living increases are impacting how people spend money. Uh, Post-COVID, people still prioritizing travel and leisure over, over household staples or, or home improvements, for example. Um, and I think we we'll continue to see that across, across the year and maybe into 24. But I think fundamentally, as our group, where we've seen performance continue well has been in the staples, food and beverage, agriculture, those kind of areas. You've been with Smurf at Kappa for almost 29 years. You're a global company with a HQ in Ireland. Why does that work so well? I, I, think, it's, I think it's about soul. I mean, fundamentally, when, when people think about Smurf at Kappa, it's an Irish soul at the heart of it. I, I think when we think about very large domestic Irish companies and those who performed overseas, I think we see ourselves very much in that kind of team. Um, a lot of it's about pulling on the green jersey and, and heading abroad and, and not only promoting Smurf Kappa, but promoting Ireland as well as part of that. Um, and I think we see our role around the, the world as being not just in the local country, but indeed fundamentally Irish. So when you go to any of our facilities anywhere in the 35 countries, you'll see the local flag, but you'll always see the Irish flag. I mean, it's a fantastic success story. And what advice would you give to other companies who are striving for similar success? Uh, I think it's about, in, in the world we live in now, it's about finding your purpose and living that purpose. In Smurf Kappa, our purpose is to cr create, protect and care. I think we live that purpose daily, that, whether that's for our products or our people or our customers, it fits that. And then I think it's about knowing yourself and communicating that effectively. Uh, I think that's something we've got progressively better at, people understanding who Smurf Kappa are and indeed what our principles are and our values are. Ken, how has your customer base changed over the years? Are there new consumers in the mix? The, the customer base by its nature hasn't changed. But I think how our customers use their products absolutely has. If, if I go back over my 29 years, which, which seems a lot shorter than when I think about it at my age, but you know, at, when I started, boxes were very simple things. They were what we call transport mediums or secondary packages. What was inside them was more valuable than the box itself. Um, but in the world we live in now, Generally, the consumer is the first person to touch our products. It's what we call the first moment of truth. So when people engage with packaging, it's the customer who uses it, the consumer. And so in a sense, we've gone from being B2B in many cases to being B2C. So that changes how our customers view their boxes, less as a transport package, more as a marketing medium. So in, in case the packaging is used to sell the product, not just transport the product. And sustainability and ESG are opportunities for Smurf at Kappa. What do you see as some of the main issues concerning packaging companies? I think the main issue, and we've been, we've been sustainable since 1934, so I think the world has been to catch up with, with our philosophy around recycling um, and renewability and biodegradability. I think the issues around regulation. Um, I think, you know, we're currently seeing regulations go through Europe, for example, which, which might focus areas around reuse rather than recycle. And we'd fundamentally believe that the recycling of products is much more effective a mechanism for, for creating new product. So we'll see the same box, for example, 25 times its life, um, which, is, which makes it ever efficient. And it actually avoids us creating new carbon emissions by creating new products. 1934, very impressive, almost 90 years. And how do you view Ireland's performance in this sector? I think no more than other countries, you can always do better. Um, I think, you know, we think about the green bin that we all have outside our door. It shouldn't really end at that. You know, a lot of the waste that goes in there could be sorted better. I, I think people having access to better ways to recycle and more products to recycle would, would improve our stats here. But I don't think Ireland is necessarily behind. I think sometimes we have a keener approach to ESG, 
but clearly it's an area we can all do better in. You gave some ideas there. Are, is there more policymakers should do to support the Irish sector? I think it's supporting producers on that ESG journey too. Uh, you know, sustainability does come with a cost sometimes. Um, but I think, you know, around capital plans for small, medium enterprises particularly, and, and helping them become more sustainable because the world is moving towards an ever greener supply chain. And it's not the big companies because they can always afford it, but those in the middle, the SMEs, they're the ones who need help and support in that ESG journey. And Ken, we've time for one final question. What do you see as the major opportunities for your business into the future? Well, we're fundamentally placed very well in the context of ESG and sustainable packaging. Clearly, it's a world that's moving ever more towards using less waste. And that's how we see it. It's not about plastic or paper. It's just removing waste. Um, our products tend to fit well in replacing some of those more wasteful kind of products. Um, so our future tends to run bright around ESG, sustainable packaging and e-commerce, which, you know, we saw grow really, really well during 2021, but it's not going away. People will always go for convenience. Exciting times ahead. Ken, thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. And for more information on Executive Insights, go to businessandfinance.com. I'm Sarah Freeman. See you next time.